Hey, what's up, everybody in the YouTube world? This is Barnun11970, and I thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch my video. All right, guys, um, I was directed by one of my subscribers, and thank you for that person, by the way, who introduced me to a site that's been there for a while, but I did not know about. Uh, it's called an American Warning TV, and they have, um, as far as I know, weekly podcasts, and uh, they have live events, which I actually was not part of, but probably had the most comments out of anybody in the entire program. And they actually mentioned my name a couple of times, and I spoke to the guy that's in charge of it a couple of times, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, one of the things that I see is one of the biggest mistakes that people in the truth or music, music, the truth or movement, the patriot movement, the free man of the land movements, etc. The biggest mistake I'm starting to find all over the place is not knowing legal definitions and how words can affect you in law. Now, to prove my point, to show that words can affect you, Imagine yourself at an airport and just kidding around, you scream out that you have a bomb. What do you think is going to happen to you? Now, I'm not saying you're a terrorist. I'm not saying you ha actually have a bomb. I'm not even saying you're thinking about even having one. You just make a joke and decide to say, well, it's just a word. I'll scream out. I have a bomb in the middle of an airport. Watch what happens. Just imagine if you are at some political a meeting or something where the president's there or a governor or a mayor is there and you scream out, I have a gun. And let's say you didn't have a gun and you were just kidding. Ha ha, it's a joke. Well, watch how quick the Secret Service will basically arrest you. So words do have consequences and they can affect you. The biggest thing I'm seeing in the Patriot movement, the truther movement, the free man of the land movements is they are always saying the same things. We are protecting our constitutional rights. And if you don't know about legal definitions and you don't know about the Act of 1871, where the Constitution was changed from the original document that talked about the United States of America, the landmass, changed it by using legal definitions, changed it into the document for of the United States which is a corporation located in the District of Columbia. Now, what is a corporation? I've talked about this so many times. When you think of a corporation like, let's just say Burger King, the, the corporation is not the building. It's not an office. It's not where people go to sit down and eat their burgers. The corporation is a registered trademark name that's filed as the corporation called Burger King or Walmart, or McDonald's, or Apple, or whatever. So the corporation is nothing more than just a name, filed and registered, just like the United States is a corporation located and filed in Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. So when people say things like, oh, our military is going to help us and our police is going to help us because they swore an oath of office. Well, they swore an oath of office to not the original Constitution of the United States of America, but to the United States, which is a corporation. So if you don't understand legal terms, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Like, for example, a person that tries to be a free man and they go, let's say they get pulled over and they talk to a police officer and say things like, well, I am a sovereign citizen. If you don't know the legal definitions of what you're saying, it, you might as well just say I'm a legal slave because that is what they call an oxymoron. You can't be both. You can't be a sovereign citizen because under the legal term of citizen, the legal term of citizen means that you are subject to the jurisdiction of the United States, which is a corporation. Which means when you say you're a citizen, you're saying that you are part of their employment run by a president. You can't be free and be part of their system at the same time. And again, words are going to hurt you. You know that saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt you? Well, say the wrong words in court and watch how quick they hurt you. So words will have effect. 
You don't want to be a sovereign citizen. You want to be a sovereign free man or sovereign people. You don't want to be a person. These are things that in this movement, if people do not understand that words have different meanings when it comes to law, that is why governments get away with what they get away with. And that's why people get in trouble because they don't realize what they are saying. So if you don't look up the Act of 1871 and you don't realize that there is a revised constitution with a revised 13th Amendment, which talks about slavery, which is involuntary servitude. Again, listen to the definition. They could have worded slavery as anything. They purposely used the words involuntary servitude, which means if you volunteer, well, then you're a legal slave, aren't you? And if you volunteer with your consent, because the Constitution only exists because it's through the consent of the governed, we being the governed. And if we don't argue it and we don't dispute it, we are consenting to it, which means we are volunteering our servitude to serve under the jurisdiction of not the country called North America, not the country called the United States of America, but the corporation known as the United States. And again, it's wall words. On one side, you see the United States of America. On this side, you see the word United States. You think they're the same. Well, assumption in law is not a good thing. I say this stuff because I have such passion in this now that I understand that I read legal definitions. And I made a video earlier today that not many people have seen, but I highly recommend you watch it because I give a prime example where I can even prove to you the definition of the word person. Now, I've said this in several videos, and I'm going to keep saying this until people comprehend this. The word person to you and me means, like, for example, oh, look at that person. You just think of it as an individual. That's what the regular term would mean. But person in legal terms is a fictional character, a corporation. If you look up DC Code 7-201 under definitions, look under Part 10. It will show under the DC Code, it defines the word person. Now, again, there's a difference between regular words that we use on the street and legal definitions. They are not the same. So when people have the drowning in good intention motive, you're just drowning doesn't matter if your intentions are good, if you don't know what you're talking about. And this is what governments are counting on. They want all these people to say, yeah, let's march and yeah, let's protest. And oh, I know my constitutional rights. Well, no, you don't, because you're basing it on the original document, which no longer applies. Because if you have ever registered to vote, if you've ever checked the box that says, are you a U.S. citizen? If you've ever paid taxes, if you have a driver's license, you are a citizen. And if you are a citizen, you are subject to the jurisdiction, not of the original government that was founded by our forefathers that created the United States of America or the Union States of America. In 1871, when they changed it and rewrote the 13th Amendment and made the document into a document for a fictional corporation that they created in 1871 under the jurisdiction of Washington, D.C., ignorance of the law is no excuse. So I hope people will research this. Get yourself a law dictionary. Look up the legal definitions. Words do matter. Like I said in the beginning of this video, go to an airport and scream out, kidding around that you have a bomb. Do you think the police and the TSA are just going to ignore it? No, they're going to climb on top of you, probably taser you, or at the very least arrest you. And you could sit there the whole time saying, oh, it's just words. I don't have a bomb. I was only kidding. Well, words create action. And if you don't know the right words, that's the difference between somebody that doesn't end up in jail to somebody who does end up in jail. Somebody that walks home freely or somebody that gets shot and killed. And if you want to trust cops and police and law officers, peace officers, sheriffs, whatever, if you want to think they really know the law, there's a difference between legal and lawful. Cops are talking about codes and statutes. It's not under our Bill of Rights. It's not under our original Constitution. 
Those are just basically made up laws to extract as much money as possible. If you think police officers know the law and understand the law and are very well adversed in the law, well, let me ask you this. How come when somebody has to appear in court, how come nobody ever asks a police officer to represent them in a court case if they supposedly know law? Why would we have a need for lawyers if policemen actually knew law? They are enforcers. The military, and I'm not saying they're bad people. What I'm saying is they are not informed of the truth. So when, for example, a military person with the most precious of intentions, nothing but good to help save the world and unite the country and do good, when they swear their oath of office to protect the Constitution of the United States, because they don't research what it means, they are pledging allegiance to a foreign country located in a 20 square mile radius of District of Columbia. And every single U.S. citizen throughout the country, throughout the 50 states, which includes Alaska and Hawaii, if you are a registered voter and a U.S. citizen, you are under the jurisdiction of the corporation that's located in Washington, D.C. And again, the word United States is a corporation. It's nothing more than the name registered as such. I want to drive this home because this is why our movements do not work. Because the people don't think words have any consequence or they don't mean as much as they should. Ah, it's just words. Say the wrong words in the wrong place and watch how quickly you will regret that decision go home to your wife and joke around that you've been cheating on her all your the time they were you were married you think she'd find that funny you don't think she'd react to that kid around to somebody that you're going to beat the living crap out of them you don't think they're going to react to that my point is words do have effects some of those you could just say to your friends or whatever oh i'm only kidding legal words there are consequences and that is why they always even say to you, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So if you're not willing to learn these things, then you should not be using the words. Because somebody that will claim that they are a sovereign citizen might as well say, I am a free slave. Because it means the same thing. It sounds ridiculous because you know what the word slave is. And you know that free slave doesn't make sense. Well, if you learn the term and definition of citizen, then sovereign citizen is the same thing. We have to realize that they have overthrown our government in 1871, created a corporation with a name very similar to the country. And people assume that they're the same thing. So if you're in the military, if you're a politician, if you are a policeman, Knowingly or unknowingly, you are actually working for a corporation known as the United States, and you have pledged your allegiance to a foreign country. And that's why we have a president. And that's why it doesn't matter where the president comes from. Because if you're the owner of Microsoft, if you're the president and you want to hire a president of Microsoft, do you care what country he comes from? Is it relevant? Does it matter? Of course not. He can hire whoever he wants. It's his business. You don't have to be of that particular country to be the president of a corporation. And that's why it is irrelevant where Obama comes from. These are the things that have to drive home. These are the things I want the people in the truth movement, in the patriot movement, the people that are standing there and saying, well, we want liberty. Marching does us no good. Let them march all they want as long as they pay their taxes. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it like at this at this point. Um, check out the DC Code 7-201, Section 10. It will show the DC's actual definition of the word person. Get yourself a Black's Law Dictionary from the fifth edition down, the older the better. Research legal terms and terminology. It's called legalese. If you don't know the words, then all you're doing is, is putting yourself in a position to get yourself thrown in jail. And this is how the governments have gotten away with it for so long, because people don't want to think that those things matter. Well, nothing's gotten better. People are still getting thrown in jail. 
And until we all realize that that phony document that was switched in 1871 and became a, a constitution for a corporation only exists through the consent of the governed. And that means our silence, because we don't know any better through our ignorance. We've consented basically by not arguing it. So the way to get out of it, because everybody's saying, oh, how do we get out of the system? Well, if we can get the masses to realize that the majority of the people are what is creating the consent of the governed, if we decide we no longer want to consent, well, they don't have any control over us, over us anymore. And it makes the, that phony constitution for the corporation no longer valid. And you don't even have to pull one trigger. Everybody wants a solution, but they don't want to hear the answer. Does it always have to be so complicated? The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. In other words, the easiest route is usually the best. So if people want to make it complicated, is there any wonder why nothing's getting done? You want to fix this system, we all have to do it. All for one and one for all. United we stand, divided we fall. The consent of the governed means that it's the consent of the governed, which means in a democracy, even though we were initially a republic, the majority tells the minority what to do. And if we don't say anything in law, it's the same as agreeing. We don't want it anymore. We no longer consent. We no longer agree to be subject to the jurisdiction of a corporation known as the United States. Because what does a king have? King has subjects. So when you're subject to the jurisdiction, that basically means you are a slave to the system and you are a legal slave based on your voluntary servitude through your ignorance. Guess what? You are now no longer ignorant. So what are you going to do about it? It's that simple. We need to wake up the masses. We need to realize and understand that these definitions do hold power in law. And that's how they have enslaved us. Please share this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please make your own video. I can't do this on my own. I try my best. I need your help if you care. If you don't, then why are you here? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.